So when you're asked to plot a graph, right? So you need to make sure that your y axis and x axis are drawn right at the side of this blue color graph that's given to you. And then the next thing you need to check is that usually this one is your independent variable. Distance along the tube. This is diameter of the tube. So usually the first column is an independent variable. Independent variable means you base on this variable that you have fixed, which is 0 0.5 cm along the tube. So this is the leg, this is the tube, right? So you start from here, which is zero. So at 0 0.5 cm, you measure the diameter and then you read the diameter and place it here, right? And four, at 4.5 cm away from zero, so let's say this is 4.5 cm, you measure this diameter and then you record the diameter here. So whatever the diameter that you get actually depends on the distance along the tube that you have fixed. So therefore, you need to know very well in the table that's given to you, usually, usually for the correct format, the first one here is the independent variable. Independent variable. Okay, the first one on the left side is the independent variable. Okay, on the right side is the dependent variable. Dependent variable. Okay, so therefore, when you plot the graph, you need to make sure that your independent variable is on the on the x-axis and your dependent variable is on the y-axis. This is because how we read the graph, we always read the graph, okay, if the value is uh, 2.4 here, that means when my distance along the tube is 2.4, what is the diameter? So you will, you will interpolate to the graph to read off the diameter. So this value actually depends on this value here. So therefore, this is dependent variable and this independent variable, okay? So therefore, you need to locate the x and y axis correctly and copy this whole thing and label in your x axis, copy this whole thing and label it in your y axis. So like this one here, diameter of the tube stroke mm, so it's copied directly from here, so it's correct. So axis alone, correctly label is already one mark. And this one mark makes a lot of difference whether you're scoring A star or A, A or B, B or C. So you need to score this mark, okay? Secondly, so this is the first mark given, which is the axis. Second mark given is the scale that they have chosen. So the scale they have chosen must be able to allow you to draw the line to occupy more than half the area given. So the scale that's chosen here is, is correct because you can see that the line occupies more than half the area of the graph given. And the scale they have chosen, you don't have to start from zero if you don't have enough space. You can start from any value. Let's say, for example, you want to start from two, then you need to make sure that this is, you write here two, say for example. And then on the left side, you start from zero, then you need to label this as zero. But if both of them start from zero, then you need to remember to label where a lot of students always forget to label the zero here. You need to label the zero if you start from zero. You start from any other value, you also have to label. It means you need to label, okay? And then the scale that you choose, remember I already told you it must be um, increasing in the form of one, two, three, four, five, or in the form of two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, or in the form of uh, zero, five, 10, 15, and a multiple of it. Okay, multiple of it, it can be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, or multiple means 10, 20, 30, or 100, 200, 300. And also multiple of 2, 4, 6, multiple of 5, 10, 15. So these are the only scale that we will accept and no other scale. Okay, and then you must mark every, every point, every division on the scale all the way until the end of the graph where you put your arrow. So to mark all the way until the end, you cannot mark halfway. And then, so this one scale correctly chosen, scale correctly chosen, and then plus the curve plot, sorry, the points plotted correctly. That means all these points here, 
are plotted correctly as a cross on the graph. So you can see that all the crosses are drawn on the graph, but be very careful. The size of the cross that you draw must not be bigger than the size of one smallest box in the graph. So this should be the maximum size of the cross in your drawing, not bigger than that. But I see actually this is actually bigger than that. So you may actually lose mark. You may lose mark because your cross is too big. Okay. And you can only use cross, dot and circle, a dot and a circle to indicate the point that you want to plot. Okay, the point. Now, what about the line? I see many different kinds of lines from your answers. So which is the one, if you want to score full marks, the best way for you to draw the line is you use ruler to join from the first point to the second point, second point to the third point, third point to the fourth point, fourth point to the fifth point. Use a ruler to join from the center of the cross to the center of the cross. This one, I guarantee you, you score full marks. You definitely get marked for this question. Okay, um, so like this, you get full marks. Use ruler to draw the line from point to point. Make sure it's from the center to center of point. Okay, so this is first way. Second way, if you want to draw the best fit curve, you need to make sure that your line is a best fit curve. Okay, like in this example here, this is definitely not best fit curve. I can see it's a straight line, but it is not a best fit curve because a best fit curve, if I draw the best fit curve across the line, okay, let's say I pass by three, three points. One, two, so these three points are exactly on the dot. And then I've got two points that are out. So this point is out, outside, and this point is also outside. So when I draw the best fit curve, I'll expect that the point that's located outside my line must have got equal distance to the line. That means to say this point to this line, okay, the distance must be equal to the distance of this point to this line. Exactly equal, then it's best fit. Or else it is not the best fit. So you can see in this graph here, it's definitely not the best fit already because I can see two points outside the line, which is this point here and this point here. But these two points are located above the line. So definitely this line is not best fit. Can you see that? So if this line is not best fit, you will lose one mark for your line not, not accurately drawn. So therefore, I highly advise you to use ruler to join point to point unless you're 100% sure that your straight line is a best fit curve. Okay? So... I want you to see other students drawing. Huh? Now, this student, I do not know whether this is a straight line or not. If it's a straight line, of course, it's not correct because this is not best fit curve. Okay? And usually when you want to draw the line, you don't join your line to your y-axis because your first point is here. So your line should only extend up to here only. So this, this part here shouldn't be drawn because you don't have data for this part. You only have data starting from here. This is the first datum and this is the last one. So your line should be between these two points. Okay. Unless it's the best fit line. If the best fit line, you can draw all the way to the y axis because best fit means any value also it will fall into the line then you can draw the line join to the y-axis. If you use ruler to join from point to point, you cannot uh, draw any line outside the, the first and the last data that you have. You cannot draw your line beyond your last data and before your first data because you don't have data for, for before this. But if you draw the best fit, then yes, you can. Okay? Get it, huh? Okay. The next example is um, this one. This one, um, you can see that the mistake here is distance along the tube is an uh, independent variable should be placed over here. Diameter of the tube is dependent variable should be placed above that. Okay. And then you can see that the zero is missing. 
And then um, I do not know whether there's a line that's being drawn. You need to draw the, the, the line which represents the uh, y axis and also the line that represents the x axis. Is it drawn or not? You need to draw that. Okay. And then you cannot use free hand la, to draw the line, please. Use ruler to join from point to point. Okay. This, this one is very important. I think probably because um, the student is using a apps, an application now, and then cannot draw. I think application can draw straight line. Can you please draw straight line using application straight line to draw? Cannot. Okay. Definitely can draw straight line one. Yeah, actually can draw straight line. Uh, if you're using, you have to figure out yourself, huh? Because if you are using like the one I'm using here, which is actually, what is it called? Huh? Uh, notability. Notability, you draw, if you draw like this, of course, it becomes a freehand drawing. But you draw from here to here and you hold on here at this point for some time, this curve becomes a straight line. So that's how you draw the straight line. I don't know what apps you're using. Okay. So that is, um, now this one here is correct. Now this is a correct one because you see the student actually used ruler to join from point to point. So therefore full marks for this student. So it depends. I would rather you score full marks than you try to draw best fit curve. Why you want to draw best fit curve when you cannot get full marks? No point, isn't it? So in exam time, you want to score as high as possible. Right, so this is the first thing I want to mention. Second thing is the calculation, the description here, right? So they ask you to describe how you, uh, let me make it bigger for that. Okay, describe how you would find the mean diameter of the tube shown in figure 3.10. So actually, friendly speaking, if they show you this tube, right? In figure 3.10, that means they ask you to what? How you can find the mean diameter of this tube. That means for me, I will actually mention it. I will make a few, because you already, you have already made a measurement for X. So I will make a few more measurements, right? Of the diameter of the tube. Right, I'll make a few more measurements, at least three measurements I must have. Five also can, minimum three. Okay, minimum three measurement. So on the figure, I will make a few more measurements. Right? And then I will divide, uh, I will add all the measurements divided by total measurements I have done. So this is called describe how you will find the mean diameter of the tube. So you need to describe step by step what you do. First step, I'm going to make more measurements of the diameter of the tube in the figure. And then step number two, I will add up all the measurements. Step number three, I will divide the measurements with the total number of measurements I've made. So this is called describing, okay? Uh, some of the answer I saw the students say that, okay, go and take the value from the, from the table because there are so many values here. So add up all these five value and divide by five. Um, I may not want to accept this answer, even though the masking accept, because based on the question, the question says how you can find the mean diameter of the tube in figure 3.10 means exactly here, only figure 3.10. So if I want to be strict, if you say you're going to use your data from the table to calculate the mean, I will not give mark because it's not answering the question. But if you measure a number of diameter from this diagram and then calculate the mean, that is 100% correct. So therefore, if you've got two sets of answers given to you, you need to think which answer is more accurate based on the question. That's how you need to think in order to score higher marks in exam.